Good morning, almost afternoon, my friends. Not usually do I do a Friday thing, but today I was just wanted to do a Friday thing, so I'll do a random bit. Uh, as the promotion for the Claiming Innocence course closes this Sunday, I'll be getting back to our deep focus. Uh, some random bits, but we're also going to be engaging in the core healing approach to codependency that is a result of narcissistic abuse dynamics. So you can expect that coming in the next week or so. I'll be starting in that, talking about what's called the SAD cycle, which stands for seduce, seduction, abuse, and discard. And then uh, the EDD cycle, which is uh, euphoria, distress, despair. And uh, intermittent reinforcement, attachment distress, all those fun things as we get ready for the this year's launch of the Heal Yourself strategy. So before I get started with that, I'm going to shoot this out to the community. Community is your safe haven here on the internet where you can find guidance, support, and tools. Find out you're not crazy and you're not alone in the experience you've been going through with narcissistic abuse. So, it. The link's above on Facebook, below on YouTube, and if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Let me know how you guys are doing in the comments below. So, let's have a little discussion about insecurity and belonging. It's today and this week, well, rather, this week has been a real journey for me in that arena so in my experience transactional value was how things functioned growing up for me um, what i mean by transactional value is that you earn your value that your value your worth is dependent on what you contribute what you output what you do things like that and this conditions us to believe that belonging is contingent on contribution. What we do earns our place. It's very much a, a I would say, an animalistic point of view or a, um, not even animalistic because animals sometimes don't do this. It's more of a narcissistic transactional system that uses love and belonging as the bait to get you to do what they want you to do. So they they invalidate your individuality and your own particular shape as a person. You you if you don't fit in whatever they think you need to fit in to your invalid. And this is where insecurity comes into play. Cuz insecurity a lot of times is the thing we try to fix, is the thing we target. Insecurity is the product, it's the result, not the problem. The problem behind it, the, the core injury that results in insecurity is a sense of transactional value. It is being used. It's not being valued for who you are. Insecurity we look at the word, it, it says insecure about something, not sure about something. Um, unreliable. And if we feel unreliable in our own sense of value, we feel unsure about our value as a human being to others, insecurity becomes the result. And this stems from this idea of transactional value. In transactional value, it's that we earn the love, we earn the praise, we, we earn the belonging based on how we please other people. So it's a give to get. And we see this show up in relationships in a number of different ways. Uh, one of the most common ways is manipulation, either overt or covert manipulation. Overt is, is uh, making somebody feel guilty for what they want or what they've done in order to get them to change behavior or give them to give you something you want. That would be an over a manipulation covert. Give me more subtle things like uh, passive aggressive complaining about things, making suggestions indirectly, um, criticizing behind people's backs, stuff like that. And a lot of times in communication about what we want and what we need in a relationship, we're going to get stuck in these difficult spaces 
a vulnerability. And if we have insecurity running in the background because we are unsure about our value to another person, we're unsure about our value in general, we're going to work hard to obscure that vulnerability and come off as either strong or needy in a way and in what way we feel we've had power in the past to get our need met and feel safe so as i've been exploring this in myself it's been an interesting journey into the idea that where have i been treating myself in a transactional way where have I been denying the love of my beingness from others? Like, and what I mean by that is, where am I ignoring that other people love me because I exist? Where am I not allowing myself to receive that? Where am I not giving myself that kind of appreciation and love? Where have I been chasing my value in pleasing others or getting certain kinds of outcomes? This is a wrestle we're going to be dealing with most of our life because we live in a transactional culture. I mean, we buy things and stuff like that, so there's always a transaction going on. But we also don't live in a culture that values individuality all that much. We are very much in marketing and social dialogue, politics and all that. We're even in religion, spiritual circles. There is this underlying theme of earning. Earning your keep, earning your place, yada yada. And it's validated because as you demonstrate cohesion or you know obedience to this thing, people validate it. When you don't, you get attacked. So it makes you feel a little crazy. <laughs> and it can feed that insecurity because when we're when insecurity exists we're again we're not sure about our value and the reason we're not sure about our value is because we have not been conditioned to connect to our our worth and to autonomize it and internalize it as something real for us instead we've internalized insecurity is real because that's been our dominant experience so that's what i've been wrestling with in my own world is okay so we've got some insecurity what do we do with it right so like in the know yourself strategy i teach this concept uh, called value retrieval it says the antidote to transactional value is what's called innate value and innate value is this internal experience this in-body experience of worth and it's again a somatic it's felt it's not thought it's it's a beingness. And when we get back into the body, we get back into our essence. And we cultivate, and retrieve it from others, we activate it within ourselves. All this transactionalism, all this insecurity goes away because the insecurity no longer um, is being produced by the assumption that there's something we're unsure about. Instead, there's a security that shows up and that says, I'm here. I'm going to trust myself. I'm going to trust in my value. I trust my value. Not somebody else, me. We start to cultivate this internal relationship with ourselves that puts ourselves first. Like, I'm accountable to me first. Does this behavior align with my values? Does my response align with what matters to me here? Do I even want to respond? Does responding even align with what matters for me right now? We're moving out of what matters to them position and moving into what matters to me position. So we get out of what's called external orientation or other orientation back to self-orientation. Like, wow, oh, what does this mean for me? This gets us out of the insecurity loop because now we're not chasing value. We're not out there hunting down that carrot. We're not fixated on the approval or rejection of another human being. We're anchored in what matters to us. We're getting back into integrity with ourselves, back into integrity with our power, with our autonomy, with our authority. And from there, then we can communicate what we need or want. If we're in a relationship, we can do it very directly because relationships are built on consent. They are not built on polarity. They are not built on authority. They are built on consent because relationships are a privilege, not an obligation. And so if we're feeling unloved in a relationship, we can say, you know, I'm feeling... I am feeling scared and unloved. 
and see how they respond. Now, so I didn't say by you or of you. It's just like I'm feeling these feelings in the relationship. And see what they share. See what they contribute to it. Because really what you're going for is the honest experience. Because if you don't have an honest relationship, then you're going to feel unsure about what's going on. You're going to have doubt in that relationship. Which leads to more problems. But the more clarity and honesty you have in it, the easier it is for you to navigate it and make choices as to whether to stay or go or invest more, ask for other requests or other changes and things like that. It also allows us to be in accountability to ourselves. Security is I'm sure of self. Well, what does that mean to be sure of self? It means I can rely on me to own my choices and actions and to evaluate myself against my values to understand if I'm showing up in a way that really works for me. So it's not just external feedback. It's our alignment with ourselves. Am I showing up in the way that matters to me? Is this cogent with who I want to be in the world? It's very opposite from the codependent paradigm because codependency wants us to conform to the expectation of the other individual. It wants us to shape shift and to please them so that we can feel safe. That's insecurity in action. Security in action is I let them be upset and disappointed and remain in my body and secure in me. Now, if you grew up like I did and didn't have a back backup behind you, you didn't have a parent that had your back, you didn't have a culture that supported you, individualism was often attacked or shamed that you were dismissed as a human being, that you had to really work hard to get at least some attention, some acceptance, some, some being valued or playtime or protection or whatever this is a challenge because now we're going against what has gotten us some semblance of connection and value some sense of belonging and it's going to feel very opposite to our nature it can be very scary this is the deep work is to go in and lean into that fear and connect with the inner self the inner child that has been abandoned, that has been socially isolated, that was ejected from the social circle, and bring them home. Allow them to return. Invite them back with love. To acknowledge their innocence, to acknowledge their sincerity and their wholeness. And to begin the repair process internally by acknowledging the trauma, by leaning into space for ourselves and to allow that part of ourself to do what they need to do to find safety again. Because really, at the most basic level, that's what we're really seeking when we're wrestling with insecurity, when we're wrestling with belonging. Safety first. We're wondering, can I be safe here? Can I be safe being myself here? Can I be safe here sharing my feelings, asking for what I need or want, saying no, saying yes? Can I be safe having a bad day, having a good day? Can I say it? feel safe relying on someone? Can I feel safe in my limits and my capacities in this space? It's what we're really looking for. And first we have to cultivate it with ourselves. Can I be safe with me? Can the parts of me that feel terrorized, that feel scared, that feel insecure, can they be safe with me? Can I be a safe space for them? Can the parts of me that feel strong and confident, virulent and alive, can they be safe with me? Can the tender, nourishing, intimate aspects of myself, can they be safe with me? Am I my first safe space? Am I willing to allow myself safety with me? Because that's the wrestle. When we become more secure with ourselves, the external becomes less and less significant because we're not seeking the safety through other people's approval. 
Instead, we're gauging whether or not, by their nature, they're safe or not. Right, well, that doesn't add to my safety. Well, I'm not going to play there. But it starts here. So when we wrestle with insecurity, we wrestle with belonging. We were really wrestling with the sense of being safe to be ourselves. And that has to start with, am I the safe space for these parts of me that feel and have been ejected from my world by my hand and by others? Am I willing to step into my accountability, my power, my responsibility there to, to make a safe space for me and for them? This is where we begin to to heal that value, that, that question, am I secure? Am I sure? Yes. I can be sure in me because I'm going to stand with me. And I'm going to acknowledge how others stand with me too. Because it's not just a me, me, me and me issue. It is a me and you thing. It's a social thing too. So it's more like who else has my back? Who else stands with me? Who else understands me and values me in that understanding? We bring that in too. So we need both. And this creates a homogeny of security. And that's where we start to experience belonging rather than insecurity. So that's my random bits for today. I hope it contributes to your journey, to your discovery of your innate value. Now, if you're wondering how to to do any of that, um, go to the library. It's linked above on Facebook, below on YouTube. And there is a tool in there called the Value Retrieval Tool. It comes from the Know Yourself Strategy. Try that out. See what that feels like to you. This is a long process. It's something I've worked on for years. I grew up insecure. I was told my body was wrong. I was told that I, as a male, am not a man. I was been communicated to me a frequently in my life um, I was taught that the things I enjoyed were wrong that that's not normal and that is bad so insecurity was something that I I wrestle with quite a bit and in my journey these are the things I have discovered that we do belong and that when we really are aligned with our internal belonging that we have become a safe space for all the aspects of all ourself, all these little parts of us that are alive within us, then we can dis discern the safe connections in our world around us. And we can build connection and shelter and play. We can build companionship, intimacy, support and play, the four zones of connection there with those people. And that is where we experience belonging because belonging, like in security, is a result. It's a byproduct of what we've been doing. So that's my blabberings for today. Appreciate you. Take time to be gentle with yourself. There's so much going on in the world. Be kind to yourself. Allow yourself to have the limits you have. Allow yourself to have the joys and the dreams you have. Be safe. I will see you guys in our next discussion next week as we jump more into reclaiming ourselves and into healing the deep components, the deep injuries that cause codependency. We liberate ourselves so that we can have more joy, more happiness, and we be us without that fear anymore. Okay? I'll see you then. Be safe. <laughs>